Okay, so in this series of videos, I'm going to have a look at the formula question uh, or the formula type of Moodle question. Now, if you want more information, you can go to moodleformulas.org where the people who wrote this style of question have an awful lot of information. But I'm just going to look at how I use them, which is possibly not how they were designed to be used, but I find very useful. Before I get into a few different applications I have, I'm just going to talk through the basics of a formula question, how they work and what the different parts are. So you'll see them here, this kind of thing, x is equal to, y is equal to, and I'm just going to create a new one. Formula questions are uh, really uh, quite useful. They're quite powerful in that you can have multiple parts, you can have variable marking, you can have part marking, you can mark uh, answers relative to other answers. So the student puts in a part A answer, and then if they make an error in part A, but they have part B relative to part A, you can grade that as correct. Uh, you can grade with respect to a known correct answer and give a percentage for a proportion. There are all sorts of different variations that you can do. But I'm just going to introduce them. So we're going to call this example one. And if we have a look through the different parts, there are variables, main question, part one, and you expand that out. And then after that, most of the rest of that is regular bits and pieces. So tags you want to attach to your question, how it deals with getting more than one try, feedback for different responses, although there's more feedback inside the questions, um, and just checking that your question works correctly. So a few other things. It also does uh, deal nicely with units if you need units for your question. So the first place I'm going to look is the main question text. And the main question text is literally just where you want to put the header line for your question. So what is the answer to the questions below? And we can just leave it at that. I don't even usually put a question in the main question part, um, or I wouldn't advise putting a question in the main question part because you have no way of grading it. That's not what it's designed for. And what it comes down to is in each part, you can add a word a mark. You can accept several different types of answer, but we're going to start with just numbers and you can put in several different responses. And in its default setting, it's actually missing a few boxes. So we'll click show more. And we'll see that we can have grading criteria, we have grading variables, and we have other rules that we can apply. And we can also, if we want, have our parts in a different order by putting in a placeholder name and then inserting them into the main question. But all of the questions have to be done through a part. Of course, there's feedback within it. So feedback, correct, partly correct, incorrect. And then you can add in more parts as you want. So there's a fair bit to these. Um, I'm going to start by discussing variables. Variables um, are values that are within that question. They can be numbers, they can be sets of letters, they can be um, functions based on other variables. And you'll see what I mean by that later. But let's create quite a simple question. So the question I want to do is, what is the area of a rectangle of two different sides? Now, there's always these little help uh, things here you see there's different ways that you can put in a random variable. So your random variable can be, uh, it basically, it's a way of randomly picking a number. And the easiest one, let's say we want two variables. So our first one, length, is going to be equal to, and then if we go back, we can see here that there are different ways. Well, we can either explicitly, so we can either in A here, we can either explicitly inside curly braces, indicate each of the variables we want. So let's do that for our length. Inside curly braces, we want it to be our length to be two or six or as two or four or six or eight. Close the curly brace, semicolon, enter. And our um, other, so length and the other variable we're gonna have is height. And in the case of height, well, we want it to be any number between two and 100 separated by one. So the first line there, the first variable, if we zoom in a little bit, is going to return either two, four, six, or eight. The second is going to return at random any number between two and 100 to the nearest one. If I were to change that to the nearest five, it would re return two or seven or 12 and so on and so forth. So that's all we need for now for our two random variables. Every time a student goes into a question, they will randomly get one of these and randomly get one of these within their question. So 
our parts text. What is the area of a square of length? And then to put our variable into the question, curly brackets and the length was L. Um, and we might want to give that units if we want. Uh, centimeters um, and height h centimeters and if we want we can put in a space for the answer so the variable for the answer is given by underscore zero for the first one and as you'll see in a lot of these things it always counts from zero so underscore zero is the first answer we'll just have one answer in this case and we'll say that the answer is going to be equal to um, and again, if you want, you can click on the help with the answers just to remind you of the syntax. So you can either have a simple number or you can have a set of different answers inside of a square bracket, or you can have different uh, functions. So in our case, the answer is going to be L multiplied by H. We're gonna have a relative error. Well, we can have a relative error if we want. Um, and we can say, any answer that is within 1%. So the relative error is the size of the difference between your answer and the answer that it should be. And if it's 1% or less, then we will accept that as correct. So that's uh, fairly simple and we can save that now. And if we have everything correct, it will allow us to save. And if we have an error inside our question, then it'll return that error and it won't allow us to save. But now that we've saved that, let's preview it. So what is the area, sorry, what is the answer to the question below? What is the area of a square of length four and height 92 centimeters? And uh, four by 92 is going to be 368, if my calculation is correct. Excellent, it says correct. And if we start again, it gives us another set of two variables. Uh, so four by 73 is 292. So if we're 1% off, then 290 should actually fit within the boundaries of what's acceptable and what's not, and it does. Whereas uh, six by 81, well, I know the answer isn't 86. So I'm gonna check that and it says incorrect. So we can edit that we can edit our relative error if we go back into part one and we can actually say that the relative error should be zero that we want students to get the question exactly right now you have to be a little bit careful one of the reasons relative error uh, or you can say absolute error in which case you can just put in the size of the value of error you'll accept is useful is where significant figures come into play and students mightn't carry all the significant figures that they need to nonetheless we've created a first formula question so our two variables are L and H. The answer is L multiplied by H. And we're asking them here, uh, what is L multiplied by H? So we're asking them to put that value in here. So one other check you can do on your question is just check the variable instantiation. That is, check some random instances of the variables that you've set up. So we can pick to instantiate anywhere between one and a thousand. So let's instantiate a hundred different variables. And we can see that it's picked at random hundred uh, different possible pairs of variables. Now there's more than hundred possibilities so it won't pick all of them and it will show us the smallest and the largest of the ones that it has picked. So you can see this could have been smaller than eight but it didn't actually randomly occur and it has gone all the way up to 98. So it gives you a very good idea of what the possible range of answers are and you can look through them and see do they make sense? Are they reasonable answers or do I want to change the parameters on my variables? So instantiating your variables is an excellent way to check that your question is going to give reasonable uh, parameters for your students to deal with. Okay, so I'm going to end the first video here. What we're going to look at next is slightly more complex usage of variables. We're going to move on to looking at global variables as well as random variables. And we're also going to look at grading criterion. Okay, if you have any questions, post them below. I hope that's helpful. All right.